Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade five, we are working in module number four on lesson number 18. And that means that just like last night, we are relating decimal and fraction, fractional multiplication. Um, these problems tonight are going to be unusual, especially for parents, uh, but also for students. They're a little more challenging in the way that we're thinking about them. Um, and so they, I, I urge you to re-watch any of these problems a couple of times, to pause, to think about them a little bit more. Um, these, are not, um, these are not approaches to the problems that will, for most students, be super easy right off the bat. So have some patience with yourself. Um, go ahead and rewatch them again, um, and we'll think about them a little more deeply. And of course, we'll get some repetition working with them tonight and in subsequent nights, and we'll master it uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit over time. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of problems from tonight's homework. I'm gonna do a combination of doing some problems and walking you through the solutions that they've already provided. One of the problems they've got here is problem number one is to multiply fra using fraction form and unit form. Check your answer by counting the decimal places. The first one is done for you. So let's see, the problem here is three and three tenths times one and six tenths. And they did that a couple of different ways. One is they were they converted three and three tenths to 33 tenths. Okay, so they converted it to a unit form, right? The smallest units are tenths there. And then they converted 1.6 or one and six tenths to 16 tenths. Okay, so they've done this in unit form. And when they did this problem, they said, okay, well, that's, that's the same as 33 times 16, like this, all over 100, 10 times 10. So 33 times 16 over 100. Then they went ahead and did that multiplication and found out that 33 times 16 is 528, again, with 100 in the denominator. And so that means this is 528 hundredths. Once you've got that, you can figure that back out in decimal form, right? 528 hundredths, we would bundle 500 of those hundredths to make five wholes. We would bundle 20 of those hundredths to make two tenths. We'd still have eight hundredths left over, and we'd have 5.28 or 5 and 28 hundredths. Now, here's what they did on this side. They said, look, when we get to this stage where we've got a kind of a unit form going in the fraction, let's go ahead and express that in our sort of standard algorithm of multiplication. So rather than 33 tenths expressed as a fraction, they said, let's do that in unit form, 33 tenths, okay? How about times 16 tenths, okay? And they said, okay, well, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and multiply the numbers part of that, and we're also then gonna go ahead and multiply the units part of that. So the tenths times tenths, one tenth times one tenth is a hundredth, so the unit form becomes hundredths, and then they go ahead and they step through the, the standard algorithm of multiplication. And, you know, I have a bone to pick with them here, which is that they kind of do this in a sloppy way, right? This would be six times three ones, that would be 18 ones. We would represent that with a little one on the line, right? Uh, then 6 times 3 tens would be 18 tenths, plus one more would be 19 tenths. Now that's what we got there. They just didn't do all the standard algorithm moves that we would normally make. Then they move over to the next partial product, and they say, well, let's see, uh, 1 ten times 3 ones would be 3 tens. There, there we go. And 1 ten times 3 tens would be 3 hundreds. That'd be right here. And now we add together our partial products, right? Let's see, that's 8. And then here again, we'd have... 9 plus 3 is 12, so we'd have 1 on the line down there somewhere. Again, it's kind of small. Um, and then 1 plus 3 plus 1 is 5, and so we'd have 528 hundredths. So we have the number and the unit. And that, you'll notice, is exactly the same as what we had over here, right? 528 hundredths, same as 528 hundredths. And that's why we end up with our, the same answer over here. So let's take a look at 1b and see if we can mimic uh, how they've attacked these problems. Let's see. I'm noticing that, oh, 3.3 or 3 and 3 tenths, hey, that's the same as this. That was just 33 tenths. So 33 tenths times 8 tenths. Oh, okay, like that, right? So that's what our problem is. If, if we expressed it in fractional form, 33 tenths times 8 tenths. And I notice that they've set that up over here, 33 tenths times 8 tenths. So let's go ahead and do this multiplication first. Uh, or let's see, let's try this multiplication first. Let's see. Um, let's go ahead and multiply the number parts of that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit because my handwriting, as you all know, is not so fantastic. So let's see. 8 ones times 3 ones is 24 ones. 24 ones, like that, right? And let's see, then 8 ones times 3 tens is 24 tens, plus 2 more tens is 26 tens. So that's 264. And let's see, what is our unit? Oh, well, tenths times tenths is hundredths, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write that, hundredths. 
So over here, I bet we could do the same thing. 33 times 8, oh, we already know what that is. That's 264. And 10 times 10 is 100. So 264 hundredths, same thing. What is 264 hundredths as a decimal? Oh, let's see. Well, we bundle up 200 hundredths to make two wholes. We bundle up 60 hundredths to make 6 tenths. And that would leave us with 4 hundredths left over, or 2.64. And we would get that whether we expressed 264 hundredths like this or whether we expressed them in unit form. Our answer would be the same, 2.64. Awesome. Let's take a look at problem number two. Problem number two asks us to multiply using fraction form and unit form. The first one is partially done for us. So this is very similar. Let's take a look at what they did. Um, 3.36. Oh, they said that's the same as 336 hundredths. And they've also written it here in unit form, 336 hundredths. So here's the fraction form. Here's the unit form, times 1.4, or 1 and 4 tenths. Well, that's the same as 14 tenths, and that's the same here in unit form as 14 tenths. So then they go ahead and multiply this out, 336 times 14. Apparently, that's 4,704, and our units are 100, 100 times 10, or 1,000. We do the same thing here, right? Hundredths times tenths would be thousandths. And we get, up, we get our answer here of 4.704, or 4 and 704 thousandths. Let's see if we can do the same thing with 2c. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in again a little bit. Okay, I'm going to leave that other example up there in case I lose track. I can use my model up here. So let's see, this is the same as, let's see, 4.04. Let's see, if we were going to express that in hundredths, we would say that's the same as 404 hundredths times, let's see, 3.2, that's the same as, well, let's see, that would be 30 tenths, plus two more tenths would be 32 tenths, right? 32 tenths, like that? So that would be the same as 404 times 32 all over 100 times 10, or 1,000. You know, I'm getting the feeling we're going to need to do this unit form version over here at the side. So let's see, 404 hundredths, 404 hundredths, I'll put it like that, times 32 tenths, 32 tenths. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do that multiplication. Let's see. Two ones times four ones is eight ones. Two ones times zero tens is zero tens. And two ones times four hundreds is eight hundreds. Awesome. There's our first partial product. Uh, let's see how about our second one. 3 tens times 4 ones is 12 tens, right? 12 tens. So we put our 1 down there, right? Let's see. 3 tens times 0 tens is 0 hundreds plus 1 more is 1 hundred. Awesome. And finally, 3 tens times 4 hundreds is, looks like, 12 thousands. And there's 12 thousands. Let's go ahead and add up our partial products. 8 plus 0 is 8. 0 plus 2 is 2. 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 plus nothing is 2. And 1 plus nothing is 1. And it looks to me like, oh, what are, what's our unit? Let's see, hundredths times tenths. So that would be thousandths. Oh, got to write throw that in there. Thou Zenths. Make sure you get that THS there on the end. Let's see, how many thousands? Oh, and how many thousands is that? Let's see. Uh, every, those 12 thousands would come out and they would make 12 whole, right? And let's see, then 938 more thousands. Nine, I'm sorry, 928 thousands. 12.928. That's the same as 12,928 thousands, right? This, these would make two holes. 928 thousands. Awesome. 12.928. And you know what? I can do one more thing to think about this, right? I can look at this number and just estimate it quickly and say, hey, this is, this number here, this is four, right? This is about four. A little more than four, but basically it's about four. And hey, this number is a little more than three. So I think my product here should be a little more than 12, right? A little more than four times a little more than three is going to be a little more than four times three. Hey, Look at my answer, a little more than 12, 12.928. So I think my estimate tells me that I might be on the right track here.
All right, last problem. Solve using, sorry, the re, we'll read together. Solve using the standard algorithm. Show your thinking about the units of your product. The first one is done for you. Oh, and I see, they're, they're doing the same kind of thing here. 2.1 times 2.2. Oh, I see, so they over here on the side, they're gonna do the fractional version. That's easy enough, let's see, that's 23 tenths times 21 tenths, right? Oh yeah, same thing as right here, 23 tenths times 21 tenths. Well, let's go ahead and do that math then. Hmm. I'm going to zoom in a little bit again for, to accommodate for my terrible handwriting. Let's see, 1, one, one times 3, 1 is 3, 1, 1 times 2 tens is 2 tens. And let's see, the next partial product, 2 tens times 3 ones is 6 tens. There's 6 tens. And 2 tens times 2 tens is 4 hundreds. Let's see, and we were able to add up our partial products. And then what's our unit? Oh, tenths times tenths, so that must be hundredths. Four hundred and eighty-three hundredths. Well, let's see, every hundred hundredths make a whole. So this is four holes and eighty-three hundredths. That's four hundred eighty-three hundredths is the same as 4.83, 4.83. And again, I'm gonna use our my estimating strategy just to point out, they look, this is a little more than two times something that's a little more than two. So we would guess that our answer would be a little more than two times two, a little more than four. And guess what? A little more than four. We are rocking it tonight. Well, this is a difficult lesson and doing these kinds of problems this way is not uh, perhaps uh, the most straightforward way that you can think of to do them. But I assure you that when we think about them in unit form like this, it can help us along. It'll also help us to catch errors about place value that we might not otherwise catch as we're crunching through our standard algorithms. So I urge you to take a look at tonight's homework, to re-watch the videos as you need to, to watch me work through those problems, and to use your perseverance and your skills uh, to the best of your abilities to work on tonight's homework. See you again next time. Bye-bye.